Concussion is a complex uh, pathophysiologic injury that occurs after biomechanical force. What does that mean? Basically it means that the brain cells are temporarily interrupted in the way they function after a collision or a blow to the head. Now this can occur with a direct blow to the head, like head hitting ground or a ball hitting the head, or it can be indirect blow, particularly those that cause a, a rotation of the head and a rotation of the brain in the skull. For instance, a, a heavy force impact to the torso that causes a rotation of the skull can cause concussion even though there may not have been a direct blow to the head. This is important to recognize because concussions can occur uh, with forces even that may not have been expected. In fact, most concussions don't uh, come along with a loss of consciousness. So losing consciousness or passing out is not required to make the diagnosis of concussion. Uh, in sports medicine, it's most important, in fact, to find those athletes that have concussion that may not have been recognized, may not have a dramatic presentation like loss of consciousness, so, so that we keep them out of sports and continue uh, to protect them from getting hurt further. Most concussions occur without a loss of consciousness. Symptoms that are typical for concussion would include headache, difficulty concentrating, loss of memory, or difficulty with balance. These are typically assessed on the sideline by a coach or athletic trainer or medical personnel. If a concussion is suspected, the athlete should definitely be out of competition and not return to play that day, even if symptoms seem to improve. And they should not return to play until they're assessed formally by a qualified physician, athletic trainer, or nurse practitioner. When it comes to making the diagnosis of concussion, we often use subjective symptom reporting. That is to say, if the athlete has new symptoms after a collision, such as headache, dizziness, or trouble with concentration, we may assume there is concussion and treat it accordingly. Most of the time, x-rays, MRIs, and CAT scans are not necessarily needed for concussion management or assessment. Those are typically done if we suspect there might be a fracture or some kind of bleed. But besides that, concussion management doesn't often need CAT scan and MRI. When treating concussion, the athlete will be removed from practices and games, and the main treatment for concussion is rest. Sometimes that involves cognitive rest or brain power rest. In fact, sometimes it means missing a day or two of school or returning to school with a note from your doctor saying you may need accommodations such as longer time for projects or tests. The patient won't go back to athletics until they resolve all of their symptoms related to concussion and they're able to tolerate full levels of school as well as move through stages of exercise from low intensity, then medium intensity, or higher intensity exercise without return of symptoms. In sports medicine, one of our main goals is preventing injuries in the first place. We often think about improvements in equipment, but to this point, uh, in concussion prevention, that's been somewhat disappointing. Headbands and mouthpieces have not been shown to significantly reduce concussion rates on the tests that we've done so far. Instead, we've been thinking about strengthening and balance improvement as far as injury prevention. Our theory is that if head and neck strength can reduce some of the rotation uh, involved in collisions, and if we can reduce the amount of spinning that happens in the brain with rotational acceleration, this may reduce concussions. Current research around concussion really centers around two major themes. One is improving the diagnosis, and one is improving treatment models. Improving the diagnosis may include making imaging studies such as MRIs more sensitive and more effective for identifying even subtle injuries, identifying long-term implications, or identifying when an athlete has actually recovered and by objective measures like repeat MRI, answering the question, are they ready for return to sport? Improving treatment models may include developing better medications, particularly for headache management, concentration improvements, or even uh, other strategies such as balance retraining for athletes who are struggling to recover from concussions. The Michaelis Center has a few programs designed specifically around concussion. Number one is concussion return to play. Once the athlete's been cleared by their clinician and they're able to move through stages of exercise, they can do that at the McKaylee Center under supervision to make sure it's done safely. In addition, we have injury prevention programs. These are mainly centered around improving the mechanics 
to prevent concussion in the first place. That would be head and neck strengthening, upper back and posture training, as well as what we call proprioception, which is balance retraining specifically to prevent awkward falls and awkward collisions.